Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the Fair Compare Weekly Podcast. My name is Rick Sini. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Fair Compare. Uh, this is episode number 45. Thank you for joining us. We're going to chat a little bit about a few news topics. Um, one of them is uh, after I just got back from Italy, uh, I thought it would be interesting to see five ways to screw up a trip. Uh, not six, not four, but five ways. So we'll check that out. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about the Rio Olympics and some last minute potential airfare opportunities there. Uh, we also have the event of the week. It happens to be in Colorado. We'll chat a bit about that and then we'll take a question from uh, one of the customers. And let me introduce our web master editor extraordinaire, um, Anne McDermott. Hey, Anne. Hey, Rick. I'm very intrigued that this is our 45th episode. Does that mean five episodes from now there will be cake and maybe five t-shirts? <laughs> I'm positive. I'm not sure I could blow out all the candles on a 50, a 50 candler. So yeah, definitely. We, we will definitely do that. So, um, you know, I, I, I like, you know, the way we do some stories, you know, best way, worst way, five ways, screw up number one. I mean, I think the, the, the number one failure, and I, and I think that you, you and I have talked about this so many different times, is not actually having enough flexibility and shopping early enough to pick the cheapest day to fly. We've talked about Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday domestic, Monday through Thursday uh, being cheaper uh, across the oceans. And those cheapest days to fly, even if you do it on half your trip, that's going to save you some money. And, yeah. I, and really, I, I don't want to, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt, but it's all about this, the, most of these have to do, at least a handful of them have to do with flexibility. And we're coming up on such a cheap season, starting as you told everybody last week, August 23rd marks the start yeah, of the, they, yeah, the fall deal season. And if you, you know, begin a trip August 23rd or after, you know, pretty much through Thanksgiving, I mean, you're really going to save. So when you say flexibility, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's day flexibility. We also talked about flying to the wrong destination. I mean, um, you know, sometimes there's multiple um, airports around what you're looking for. Uh, case in point, Miami and Fort Lauderdale, for example, a lot of airports in uh, uh, Los Angeles area, for example. So picking the right uh, airport, the right destination, the right day, all those will end up ultimately saving you money if you start early enough and have a little bit of fat flexibility. My favorite uh, screw up is to pack like an image. <laughs> You know, this morning I did a bunch of radio shows, and I I, I mentioned that I just got back from Italy and actually mm -hmm. was there for two weeks with a with a carry on bag, and nobody, absolutely nobody, believed it. I, so I yeah. thought, darn, I should have, as we were packing, I should have taken some pictures of stuff as we were as we were doing that. I mean, um, literally, the packing process at our house. Uh, I I particularly like the rolling method where we um, you roll your clothes up. Um, you know, in this case, we were going to, to Italy. The average temperature is um, just about two degrees below the, the face of the sun. <laughs> so taking a pair of jeans would have been blasphemy. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, so packing is, is, a, is a, one of those things where we have a video on our site. I should have taken a little more for more pictures, but honestly, I think for the last, at least for me, it's always been that way. I finally convinced my wife and daughter uh, to do it that way, and they love it. You convinced me too, and I've I got you convinced as well. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, I've I've gone to Europe for 12 days uh, with a carry-on, and I I wouldn't do it any other way. I mean, it's just so much easier. I uh, and I, you know, I'm a woman. I pack more stuff, but uh, I can. I felt perfectly comfortable. I was well dressed. Uh, things weren't wrinkled. I had plenty of stuff to wear. I cannot stress enough. And you mentioned that video we've got. It's called the sit and zip video. It'll really help you with packing. It's kind of funny because we always try to find the pharmacy. It's like I remember you know, when my wife used to pack, it was like she opened her bag and it was like a Sephora store. You could just go in and do a little bit of shopping. <laughs> um, it's like, oh goodness, well, are we just opening up a store or are we going on vacation? Um, but, uh, you know, finding the pharmacy, having some of those things, you know, uh, I know sometimes it, it can be a little more expensive, for example, uh, buying sunscreen when you're actually there instead of taking it with you. Um, there's all sorts of d easy ways to sort of get around it. And we'll, we'll have another, we'll have another talk about that later. And, and then I have to um, say that I think 
the biggest problem, and I do, and I'm really good about this, and my, and my wife's really on me about this, is basically to have Plan B. Always mm -hmm. have Plan B. <laughs> um, things flying doesn't go well. What happens if you don't make it to your connecting city? How are you going to handle that? In my case, we were actually meeting some people in Charlotte. They were flying Southwest Airlines. We were flying American. The, the plan B was what happens if we don't meet and we're on the flight to Rome, for example, in this particular case out of Charlotte. Um, so always have a plan B because it will go into effect from time to time, guarantee you. Yeah, you know, uh, I bet Southwest was uh, wishing they had a plan B this uh, past uh, past seven days when they, they had that big outage. And I got a feeling they had plans uh, B, C, and D, and it yeah. auto automatically made it to plan E because it's definitely when you have a network outage of something like that, um, you know, it, it, it's... I, I feel for the passengers out there, the hundreds of hundreds of thousands of passengers that got delayed. So um, I will say Southwest was great about keeping people informed. That's one thing that they really did right. The, the worst thing you can do with somebody is leave them around, cranky, and uninformed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just not a good idea. Information is good. I mean, good, bad, or indifferent. Sometimes it may be bad. Um, you know, I, I like pilots that come on and say, by the way, it's going to take another two hours. Right. Yeah. Instead of the ones that come on and say every ten minutes it's going to be ten more minutes, <laughs> and then you're sitting there for two hours, I guarantee you the one that that actually gave the proper information doesn't get as much uh, you know guff as some of the other ones as well. So let's talk about Rio. Are you yeah. going? I'm not going to Rio. Um, just too many things going on, mm -hmm. daughter, and so many things. Um, she's about to get her driver's license. We're going to sort that out. But I wish I was going to Rio. I've been there several times. Uh, great place to visit. Um, but, uh, you know, as people are preparing and, and we're, we're drawing nigh upon it, uh, it's important that they make sure all their documents are in good shape. Their visa, In this case, uh, you have to have a Brazilian visa. I'd make sure that's all in good standing. Actually, um, you don't. You don't have to have a Brazilian visa if you're from the U.S. or Canada, and there's okay. a few other countries. They waived it just for the uh, Olympics, but otherwise. But if you're going to be doing anything else besides seeing the Olympics, like conducting any sort uh, of business, yes, you do have to get the visa. So it's a little yeah, tricky. yeah. So it's weird because I was there uh, I don't know six months ago and I had to have a visa. I didn't realize yeah. they waived it for the Olympics. Hey, good for them for waiving that. Um, um, you know, <laughs> well. So I mean, it makes it a little a little more simplistic. Um, you know, the hotels getting make sure your your stuffs all take. Make sure you've confirmed all your reservations. Um, and if you haven't gotten airline tickets yet and you want to go to the last minute, I'm hearing, Ann, by the way, that there are some tickets available <laughs> to events and whatnot. It's, it's yeah. a little bit complicated. Um, you know, getting to Rio in that sort of $1,300 to $1,800 range, there's some hacking you can do if you want to, if you want to go into some of the, the you know, Brazil is sort of on the, the northwestern coast. You can go into uh, Peru, uh, uh, into Colombia, for example, which is much cheaper, and then sort of make your way over on a low-cost airline if you want to do a little hacking. But in generally, um, you're going to see that price point still in that $1,500 range, and the hotel is a little bit cheaper um, now at the last minute, especially you know being able to use Airbnb and some of those other sites. Well, if you uh, don't mind missing the opening ceremonies, can't you get a better deal on airfare? Oh, there's no doubt. I was looking at it the other day that the second, the, as you go into the second week of the Olympics, the flights are much cheaper uh, going in there. So, you know, having if you really want to sneak in there, the best your best bet is to sneak in uh, starting in the second second week of the two week. Uh, visit and you'll save anywhere from 30 to 40 percent if you do second week. But you got to get out there and shop right now. It's it's drawing very nigh at the moment. And uh, for you know just a general safety and informative link, as uh, you always recommend, the travel.state.gov has an excellent Olympic section, and it's got safety tips using ATMs, medical insurance, uh, who to contact if there's any problems. Yeah, it's got a great it's section. Really good. It has a great section on Zika as well. I know a lot of people are concerned about that. So, yeah. um, so check that out at the Department of State. They do a great job of updating uh, their website in general, not just for the Olympics, but for many of the destinations that are very popular. And if anybody goes, let us know how it is. Uh, on, yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, Twitter. 
have, um, my my wife is a huge Olympic junkie. That it'll be 24 by 7 Olympics for the, for two weeks coming up. So we'll have to see. I know it's one of her favorite times every four years. And uh, well, I guess it's every two years because we have the Winter Olympics as well. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely something. Uh, and by the way, go USA, USA, USA. <laughs> I still I, I still have a Lake Placid jersey for the 1980 uh, U.S. hockey team uh, that's that sits Did in my closet. Really? Yeah, I do. Wow. So I, I'm uh, you know, and I remember where I was when that game was. So I don't know. It's one of my favorite moments from the Olympics. So uh, I, and every time it comes on ESPN where they show that, I'm glued to the TV. So you know, four or five times a year, I'm I'm remembering uh, that particular event. So I hope they have an event just like that uh, in the Olympics uh, this year. It'll be fun to watch if we can't be there. Uh, we have a question from a customer. This is Tom from, I hope I'm not mispronouncing it, Novi or Novi, Michigan. I do know that that's about, uh, about 30 miles outside of Detroit. And Tom says, I have a small business and mm -hmm. my he and his employees have to travel often, but generally just due to the nature of the business, they have to book within two weeks of the trip. He wants to know, Rick, can you share any tricks, <laughs> tips, tools sure. to help us lower the cost of travel each month? Well, a couple things. Um, this is a, what they would call classically. So historically, and I've been doing this a long, I'm showing how old I am now, a long time. Used to, they considered any purchase inside of 14 days to be a business trip. Mm-hmm quote unquote business trip and, and essentially if your boss was buying your ticket then you could afford to pay three four times the normal amount. Um, more recently in the last seven, eight, nine years when you have low cost airlines like JetBlue and Southwest, um, Virgin America, that break point typically now is a seven day advance purchase. So oh. from an advanced person standpoint you have zero, three, seven, they used to have 10, AirTran had 10, not as much as today, 14, 21, and 30-day advance purchase. And every one of those stair steps, you would get lower prices. So a 30-day fare would be cheaper than a 21-day fare. Um, and then, you know, when you were on the 29th day, you couldn't buy those fares anymore. So you're looking at, in this case, either seven-day fare or 14-day fares. They tend to be, seven-day fares tend to be three to four times more than sort of the 30-day fare. Uh, and uh, they also tend to be about two to three times more the 14 day, the under 14 day fare, which essentially is a seven day fare. So if you're inside inside of seven, you're going to get the three. Um, so definitely, the earlier you can book, the better. Okay, a couple things, a couple different things there. Uh, and and uh, he has to book within two weeks. So stay in that 14 limit if you can. It is cheaper to fly on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday, slightly for business travelers. Business travel fares don't typically have rules on them for Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, okay. but the inventory systems tend to, uh, you know, discount those particular days a little bit more. So if you could take at least half your trip on that particular day, um, you know, if you are doing a lot of business travel, um, I, there's, you know, each of the airlines, or at least the one I'm, I'm aware of, each of them has sort of a business program where you can get loyalty points and some other things. It's worthwhile to sign up if you're buying enough tickets. Um, I, um, so you can check those out, check out the loyalty programs with those. Um, oftentimes, um, you know, if, if a lot of people are, are flying on there, you can look to see if it's always at the last minute. They have, many of them have dif discount programs uh, for, for like a total spend. So if you're spending, I don't know, twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year on, on flights for your employees, you can look at potentially uh, getting some discount off of that as well. Um, so, you know, if you're flying into Europe at the last minute, there's some stuff you can do uh, by by checking out some some agents and some sites, some um, a la carte booking sites have pre-packaged airfare, which is much cheaper than buying it a la carte. Uh, so you want to check that out as well. Um, so you know, it, it depends on where you're going. In many cases, we've seen prices drop dramatically. Like out of Dallas, uh, you know, a four an, an, a seven day fare would have been historically somewhere in the six or seven hundred dollar range. Mm -hmm. um, now it's down the three hundred dollar. One so thing I, I, every yeah, routes matter. One thing I, I wanted to point out is, um, you know, and this may be blindingly obvious, but uh, I want to. 
make sure that he's not being loyal for no reason. I mean, <laughs> I mean is he make you know, if there's enough flights, it, it may work out well. But, you know, it, it, the obvious thing is always compare airfares. Yeah, I'm and, not sure where, and, and, and I'll be, I'll probably mispronounce, it's either Novi or Novi. It's, it's just outside of Detroit, and I know that JetBlue flies there. Now, JetBlue may not fly everywhere uh, uh, he needs to go. Right, but, I think that's the problem, right? So you're going to see the more expensive flights out mm -hmm. of uh, Detroit, um, you know, De Detroit historically being uh, um, a Northwest, and which now is a Delta hub. Right, mm -hmm. so um, you would have lots of flights. Uh, many, t a lot of those would go hub into Atlanta and from other ones because of its hub status. It probably has some, you know, another ten to thirty or forty uh, nonstop flights, depending. But then, then the competition with JetBlue or Southwest would be relatively low uh, on those particular routes, only to a handful of cities where you would see the competition that would drive the price down. Now, I don't know if business people, you know, what it's like. Do they have to get, you know, can they waste uh, a day okay. by taking a connecting flight? Usually not. I think that's why you see a lot of these price points that are higher. You have to be at a meeting. You're going to, you you want to take the nonstop. Look, it's pretty simple, right? If your boss is buying your ticket and it doesn't, and they don't seem to matter, you're going to buy the most convenient ticket, right? Um, for small businesses where they where it does matter, um, and you know, for, I, I, and I've seen small businesses. In fact, we've seen with American Airlines um, trying to compete with with airlines like Spirit. I'll give you an example: a, a ticket from a last minute ticket, like say you're buying two days in advance from Dallas to New York on American nonstop, might be fourteen hundred dollars round trip, or wow. maybe. Sometimes eleven hundred dollars. The Spirit Airline nonstop is four or five hundred dollars, right? You may not like yeah. to fly Spirit. You may not be loyal with Spirit. But guess what? If you're a small business, you're going to take the five hundred dollar version uh, from time to time. And that's why American and Delta have announced that they have programs where they're trying to compete with those lowball airfares on certain times of the day. Um, so it does matter what airline you pick, and and you have to make those trade-offs, and also you know whether or not you can take a long connection or whatnot. A lot of people that are really good at it can also do hacking by looking at one-way fares each way to see if they can find something cheaper, for example. So um, it's tougher. I, I'll tell you, Anne, it's not that easy to get a great deal once you, you're inside. Uh, well, if you're inside seven, it's really tough. If you're inside fourteen, you have a little bit of more leeway. So you know, shop in that other window. If you can. And thanks, Tom, for your question. If anybody else has a question, please send it to customer.service at faircompare.com, and Rick will do what he can. And I can do what I can, yeah. So now <laughs> off to the adventurous uh, event of the week. I, I and, love this. Uh, and one of my favorite topics is the uh, is beer, A, eh? and the Great American Beer Festival is one of those topics as well. Uh, in uh, early October, um, and flying into the Denver area at the Colorado Convention Center. I see that they have 3,800 different beers from over 800 of the finest breweries in the world, I guess, and there's going to be fun games like beer pong. What a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm positive. And areas areas yeah. to hang out. <laughs> Costumes yeah. encouraged. I love that. Costumes encouraged. Uh, well, it, 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 Comic Con is not at the same time, by the way. <laughs> so if you have your Comic Con costume, head out to the Colorado. There, apparently, they're going to do that. So, yeah, I know beer festivals are fun. Um, you know, I, my my co-founder and I. My co-founder is Scottish, so he's certainly a beer connoisseur as well. Um, and he also lives in Durango, Colorado, so they they have a lot of microbreweries. And and uh, so, if anybody's out there in, in Colorado and Durango, Steamworks has got some good beer. So, and I'm sure they'll be presenting some of their beer at the Great American Beer Festival. And if you like this event, and who wouldn't, uh, you can find it and, and many, 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 many others on Adventurist, which is the Fair Compare app. Yeah, you can check it out on the website. You can go to the blog and click on the Adventurist tab. You can also download the native app on both uh, your Android device and your iOS device. Uh, looks uh, really good, I'm assuming, on the new Apple uh, iPhone 7 that will be coming out in the next couple of months. So be sure and download that. Thanks, Rick. Thanks.